Hey, this is James Diamond. I, I know you can't really see me in the video for GlockCNC.com. Uh, also, our sister website, which is SherlineCollet.com. And what this video is going to be about is our new headstock. Uh, this is our new headstock. It's quite a bit different than both the stock Sherline headstock or even what Sherline calls their industrial grade. And here are the significant differences in the available spindles that are for this. This is the stock Sherline headstock right here. And you can tell it's, it's pretty thin walled on both sides. And that means we couldn't fit a very big bearing inside of here. In fact, this is a little closer to a, a stock bearing size that we might use for our, our, one of our 25 millimeter spindles that would go in there. And when we put a large bore spindle in there, we have to go with a 30 millimeter uh, inside diameter bearing, okay? Which makes the bearing kind of thin. So what we have to do is we have to end up double stacking the bearings in there. In fact, the bearing sticks out just a, just a tidge out of there, okay? So what we decided we want to do is we wanted to have a much more robust bearing in there. And we also wanted to not only have a more robust bearing in there, but we also wanted to be able to possibly fit a 5C spindle through there at some point. And this is what we came up with. This, now this will mount, this has, this doesn't have to stick out like this, but this is the key that goes into the alignment key. It's got the standard alignment pin that would screw in the set screw into that pin in there, right? So it'll fit on your standard Sherline lathe or your standard Sherline mill, okay? And now this little key right here, this is really close tolerance. So what you'll want to do is when you get yours, I'm just going to tell you this ahead of time, you'll put your key on there, put a piece of wood on there, a small chunk of wood, and then just kind of tap that in, hammer that in a little bit because it'll be a real nice snug fit. Let me show you the difference, okay, in, in some of the sizes, okay. Here's the, the size difference. It's a pretty big difference. Take a look at, for example, the, the wall on here, how thin the wall is there compared to this. So there's a lot more meat on it. Additionally, we put a quarter, 20 screws on the four corners here, taps I should say. For people doing custom projects, having this pin right through the center is not the most rigid idea in the world. So what we did is we put on the corners these tapped holes so you can have more mounting options. Additionally, one of the advantages of having a thicker headstock is it better handles the vibrations and it's got some more meat in here as far as metal if you wanted to mount something else to it, okay? Now here's, here's the really cool part of this, okay? Here's some of your options. Here is, I know this is a little beat up looking because this was something we pulled out of a, another machine. But here's one of the spindle options, okay? It's an R8, so you can now use an R8 inside of your Sherline mill. And instead of using a bearing like this, you're using a bearing like this. Just to give you an idea, the bearing is much, much more robust that goes inside here, okay? Now, the cool thing about using, well, actually, I'll get back to the cool thing about using an R8 or an MT3. But it'll also, of course, set, this is an ER50, so this is a pretty good size uh, ER right here. But we have ER25, 32, and 40, and this monster size 50 right here. Now, one that I don't show here is we have an MT3 uh, spindle that also has a chuck adapter on it, a jaw chuck adapter built on it. Or for that matter, it doesn't have to be chuck, you can also use uh, other plates on there if you wanted to. Uh, here, here's what I think is the coolest thing though. The R8, okay, one of the reasons we wanted to get the R8 and the MT3 on there is that we could use the Tormox uh, tooling system and what that is, it's it's an R8 that fits in here like so, okay? So this fits in, and I'm going to leave this out just so you can see what I'm talking about. It fits in there, and then there's tool holders, okay? This is a solid tool holder. They also have ER tool holders. They have fly cutters. They have tons of options for tooling. This fits into here, okay? Now, one of the reasons we, we didn't use this one is it was 
wasn't made correctly, so this didn't go all the way in, so we, I can't really push this all the way in for you entirely. But what happens that makes this so good, okay, is so we've got this adapter in here, and then it pulls tight right here. So instead of the, the pressure being taken on the angle alone right here, okay, the pressure is right here on the face of the spindle. And that's really where you want it, okay? So you have face, you got pressure on the face of this in addition to the inside taper, so you've got much more rigidity. Now, you can use tons of, like here's an ER size right here, but they've got tons of other cutters that you can go with that. And it's quick change. You don't have to remove this whole thing out of there each time. It just drops these pieces out. Now that means, okay, this can be adapted for automatic tool changer. So you can make your system an automatic tool changing system. The advantage of the MT3 is it fits so close to where the bearing is. That gives you more rigidity, okay? The R8 version, okay, it has a little more stick out on it which means that it's, you're going to lose a little bit of rigidity in there because it sticks out farther from the bearing. So you got kind of a pro and con there. The pro to this, is the R8 version, is that you can use, well, R8 stuff in it, right? There's a lot of options there. Uh, the disadvantage of the uh, MT3 is you can't use the R8 stuff in it, but it's more rigid. So you'll have to make the decision of what you want to do. One thing I will tell you, is that by using either of, well, actually pretty much this one, this is going to take up some of your z-axis on there, okay? If you're using this on, a, on, the, on the middle. So there it is. We've got a really, really robust headstock now available, robust bearings compared to what, we, what else we had to use on there. An excellent, excellent upgrade to the Surelines. Now these are going to be available with ABEC 5, or you can upgrade to ABEC 7 bearings and angular contact bearings with these. I do recommend that since you're turning a bigger bearing and you might be using something with a little more mass, uh, you can use the stock Sherline motor. The mounts are there for it. You will have to get a different belt that's a little longer to make it work. But I would also recommend that you might want to start off with maybe one of our 600 watt motors on there to really uh, get all the power you want out of this because this obviously a larger bearing is going to create a little more drag. So there you have it. Check it out. It's at GlockCNC.com. That's GlockCNC.com. It's an excellent, excellent upgrade to your mill, especially if you've got a custom project or maybe you have one of the A to Z mills too. All right, I'll talk to you later.